Hey everybody, Aaron Cowan, Sage Dynamics. Continuing our series on rifle drills, we have Caden Standards. This is a drill I developed based off of the UTC size scoring zone. It's a four by six box inside an eight and a half by 11 B zone. So A zone is four by six inches. The B zone is eight and a half by 11. Again, you guys probably heard me say recently, uh, scoring zones are arbitrary, but we can all agree that the smaller the group or the smaller the point of aim, the higher the skill it's gonna measure or the higher the skill you need to actually perform in that smaller objective target size or subjective if you like. This drill was intended for developing recoil management and cadence shooting for handgun purposes, which is a topic that's very near and dear to my heart, but a completely different topic. And if you come to a class, you'll get my whole, let me get my soapbox out spiel about it. This is equally applicable to the rifle because this drill is started from a point of aim. We're taking the draw stroke out of it, or in this case, we're taking mounting the gun out of it. I'm gonna put my reticle on my standby or prior to the beep of my shot timer exactly where I want my first round to go with the rifle, of course, accounting for holdover based on zero, which is a little added, added degree of difficulty to it. You can shoot this from three, five, or seven yards, and there's two different scoring zones depending on how, how much you wanna challenge yourself, and each scoring zone has a different par time. So if I'm just shooting for the four by six A zone, I've got par times. If I wanna challenge myself further, and I want to shoot to the reduced size A zone, which is a two inch by four inch A zone, I've got par times based on the distance you shoot it from. This is one of those things I like to shoot cold. One of the most aggravating things, I guess, is when I go to the range, the first thing I get there in the morning, I gotta shoot something first, the cold drill. Sometimes I do Eleanor, which is something, there's a video, I've done a video on that. If you've been to a class, you've been frustrated by her. Or uh, I'll shoot the fives, which I've done a video on that, or I'll shoot this, but I can only pick one to be cold in application of skill. Uh, this one, it is a little bit higher round count because it's a seven round string of fire. Uh, so you may shoot from the three, the five, the seven, and then that's it. Or you may run them ad nauseum uh, until you run out of ammunition or you run out of patience in order to do the performance. I find that it's pretty easy with a rifle, uh, greater recoil management, more points of contact. I've got muzzle devices in play that help me manage that muzzle rise. It's easier to get my four by six, my A zone hits. When I go to reduced A, it can be a little bit more challenging, especially based on what factors I have helping me in addition to my grip technique. I may put too much torquing pressure on that rifle. And the biggest problem with our support hand, no matter what grip we're using, is it's gonna apply some degree of asymmetrical pressure to the gun. So as I speed up, bang, 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 versus a slow, methodic, breezy length of fire. Uh, steel drums versus you know thrash metal. Uh, the recoil technique I'm using may actually work against me. So this drill measures how quickly you're able to return the rifle to a desired point of aim based on your applicable technique of recoil management with your support side hand because the primary hand doesn't do a whole lot on the rifle anyway to help manage that muzzle rise or that muzzle torque left, torque right or torque down, depending on which muzzle device you choose. So I like to shoot this suppressed, but I also like to shoot it with a flash hider or the few guns that have them, because I generally stay away from them, a uh, break or a comp. So just a real quick demonstration of what I'm talking about. I'm gonna set my target up and I'm gonna shoot from three, five and seven for the A zone. Now I'm already warmed up on this because I've already previously today, my range trip filmed something else. So I'm not shooting this cold, but just give you guys an idea of what it looks like. One point two three. One point two nine. Was able to make par time. The first par time is really tight. As you move back, it becomes a little bit easier because these par times are really set up for a handgun. So if you want to play with the par times, you can, but I still think these par times are reasonable for how fast we're working that trigger, how fast we have to reapply our sight picture during our, our recoil behavior. Uh, shooting it for the reduced size A zone, you do get a little bit more time to perform, but you're losing significant amount of your margin of error. So now I can deviate on the vertical a lot, but my horizontal deviation is limited to two inches. Not a big deal at three yards. Once you get back to seven, that can be a tall hill to climb if my technique and skill hasn't gotten me or hasn't developed to that point yet. So shooting on the reduced size A zone, well, here's a look at that.
Again, overall, pretty happy with my performance. I was a little warmed up, which some people think is a factor, and it is, uh, if I'm looking for a more objective view of where my skill set's at. That doesn't mean warmed up, a drill can't be challenging, and you can't work on your skill development. The important thing is to recognize where your rounds hit when you performed this task that someone else set the standards to, to see what you need to work on. If you're having more horizontal deviation, it's probably your grip technique that's torquing the gun or pushing the gun left or right, pulling the gun left or right. Probably not your muzzle device, although it could be. Uh, shoot it with a flash hider, shoot it with a suppressor, uh, see how you feel about it. If I'm having that vertical deviation, which is why the scoring zone is a little bit more reasonable for vertical deviation, because people are taller than they are wide, usually, uh, it just shows me where I'm shooting in the arc when I have a small amount of time or shooting during the muzzle rise and fall process when I have a, uh, a small amount of time to perform the task. 2x4 is a pretty unrealistic size point of aim to some standards for the speed at which we're required to shoot these seven round strings, but I still like it and I'm going to keep doing it. So that gives you a look at another rifle drill that I like. And of course you can run this on, like I said with the, the last video, the first video, you can run it on red dot or you can run it on magnified optic. It's not a big deal, uh, depending on your appreciation of, of the, or your skill set on both. If you're still like, oh, magnified optics are slow in red dots, they're not. I encourage you to shoot drills like this on your magnified optic and see what, and really compare it. If you have two rifles, shoot one with the red dot, shoot one with the LVPO or LPVO, or however you say it, uh, and see which one um, provides an appreciable difference, if at all. If you're new to magnified optics, this is a good drill to get you used to the speed blur you may get from your magnified optic that you don't necessarily notice when you shoot a red dot, because the magnification, scope, shadow, other behaviors that we commonly see on a magnified optic, we don't see on a red dot sight. But this is another video on uh, rifle drills that I like, and we'll continue the series again next week. I'm Eric Count with Sage Dynamics. Train accordingly.